Good morning. This is Breakfast with John Kay and Sally Nugent. Just after half past seven, thanks for joining us this Monday morning. And in recent months, we've seen strikes by NHS staff, including nurses, paramedics and porters. But half an hour ago, junior doctors in England became the latest group to down tools. NHS England says the action is expected to cause some of the most severe disruption of services to date. So here's what you need to know. This strike will last 72 hours, ending at 7 o'clock on Thursday morning. More than 36,000 junior doctors are expected to take part. They're all members of the British Medical Association and they're calling for a pay rise of around 35%, which the union says is to make up for cuts in real pay since 2008. Well, Dr Emma Ronswick is a junior doctor and deputy council chair of the BMA. Morning to you. Good morning. Um, thanks so much for coming in. First of all, just to clarify something, you are still on duty today or...? So, so I'm on strike today with thousands of other junior doctors. Um, I'm carrying a phone for derogations for serious emergencies. So if there were, for example, a, a, a terror attack or a major fire like Grenfell, um, then we would return in a, in a derogation agreed with NHS England. So that's when something dramatic and unexpected happens. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but there are a lot of people who are expecting just appointments today. Uh, it's been in the diary for ages and, and those have been cancelled. What do you say to people waking up this morning who thought today was the day they were going to hospital and, and they can't and they're disappointed and maybe worried? Yeah, I, I'm really sorry that this has personally affected people. But I have to put the blame at the door of Steve Barclay, who has known since August that, that we were planning to uh, move towards strike action. We announced our ballot in October. In January, we said that if there were no discussions, no negotiations, there would be three days of industrial action. Um, last week, Steve Barclay came to us and said he had no mandate to negotiate with us. And on Friday, he called some of our negotiators out of work in order to make no offer in a meeting that he didn't even turn up to. To then, on Friday evening, almost 10 o'clock, say, we want you to cancel your strikes for, for talks. Again, no offer. The government has not lifted a single finger to prevent this dispute from progressing as it has done. We're looking to reverse pay cuts, the pay cuts that have caused doctors to leave the health service and get us into a position where we've already got 7.2 million people on the waiting list, and it's only going to get worse if we don't turn the health service around. Just to be clear what you say, you're saying pay cuts is because you're saying that over the years, your pay has not kept in, in line with inflation. So overall, the real terms effect is, is your pay has been cut. Yeah, absolutely. So if, if things cost more, but your wages haven't gone up, then you can't afford those things anymore. And for doctors, that's increasingly meaning that you can't afford housing in the places that you work, you can't afford childcare. For those of us who were working ridiculous rotors, we're moved great distances from our families against our will through rotational training. So you can't rely on other people to pick up your kids from school and so on. You're having to pay for overnight childcare. All of these things add up. All of our exams, all of our professional costs have gone up by inflation, but our wages have not. And that's making us all poorer, like many people in this country. I can sense your frustration um, from the first couple of answers that you've given us here. But what do you say to people, including some senior doctors, who suggest that the pay rise you're asking for is just too big and makes you appear out of touch? Mm. It's only large because that's how much we've lost. So if you think, you know, it, it's, a, it's, it's a lot of money to get to gain, Just that's remind only people, because... 35% is what yeah, you're asking Yeah, absolutely. For. So if you lose 25%, 25 from 100 is 75. If you add 25 again, that's a third. 75 so just mathematically that's what we're looking to, to regain the cost is about one billion pounds to the government far less than they're spending on a whole variety of other things they've spent 15 times that written that off on unusable fraudulent ppe just within the health budget that's before you get to the spending on you know a, a lots of other things this is a drop in the ocean for the government they just don't want to spend it on maintaining the staffing of the health service so that we can give the care that patients deserve so you said that steve barclay has suggested it's time to talk why no talks? He's unfortunately put really intolerable preconditions to Which talks. Are? So he said that uh, any any pay must any pay discussion must be non-consolidated, i.e., one-off. Given that we're looking to reverse pay cuts, that's no use to us at all. He's asked for cancellations of strikes. Again, we we've got n no trust that these are good faith discussions, given that he's known since August that we were moving towards this position to call for no strikes the Friday before Monday when strikes are due to start is 
is, is an attempt to play us. And then, and then there are other things. For example, he suggested that in any discussion, we would have to then recommend the deal to members, regardless of what that was. So we don't think that those are acceptable preconditions. We're very happy to negotiate in good faith. We've gone to every single meeting. Steve Barclay has only come to one. So we're very happy to negotiate anytime, anywhere. Steve Barclay needs to drop these really silly preconditions if he wants that to take place. Is, is 35% though a precondition that he just knows he's not going to be able to get close to that? So that's why he's not getting involved. Well, we're looking for the, for the value of, of pay restoration. So what we were paid in 2008, we're quite happy to talk about how we get there. There's negotiations to be had, but whilst he continues to insist on giving us serious, massive real terms pay cuts this year, alone a 10% pay cut the equivalent of working a month for free this year compared to last year there's there's no there's no discussions to be had when there's no offer from on the table from from the, the government side the government would say though that you've had an 8% pay rise since 2019 what's your response to that that's 2% a year this year that's an eight that's that's a 10% pay cut in real terms so it's it's just disingenuous but you did agree government. to that didn't you hmm as part of a whole deal with a number of, of other changes to our contract, which included major safety improvements, supported return when you've been off sick or pregnant, um, reduction in the maximum number of hours that you can work in any given week to 72 hours a week, for example. So we made lots of significant changes for the safety of doctors and patients in that contract discussion last time. And we accepted as part of that um, a, a deal on pay that helps help the government maintain their costs. But it's, it's not turned out to be enough and it means that some of us, lots of us, are now moving abroad where wages and conditions are better. The fact that this strike is three days, 72 hours, that's going to cause an awful lot more disruption, isn't it? If it was just 24 hours. Could, could you have just done maybe one day to start with? You could have done, but we're looking to move this government quite significantly to the table. So we warned them in January that this was the kind of action that we would take. Our experience of the strikes in 2016 is that um, coming out all out strike action is safe um, with seniors to cover us but effective and disruptive so we're looking to bring the government to the table where previously they've made no offers whatsoever okay dr emma runswick thank you very much indeed from the bma thank you